Hello. Can you guys hear me? Thank you, Miriam. Appreciate it. Let me wait a couple of minutes and then maybe we can keep start. Okay, let me see, we are 17 now. Maybe just a couple of minutes more and then we can start. All right. Welcome, everyone. This is Erhan from Simlarch. Um, today, I'll be introducing our new product, which is a platform called Tivin API. This is the very first session and the very first webinar for Tivin API. So we are all excited. Um, let me go through um, on a quick presentation. Then maybe we can have a demonstration on the platform and we can work real time with our solution and with our projects. So this is Arhan from Simularch. Um, let me put this here. I'm the CTO and the co-founder of Simularch. At Simularch, we are developing digital transformation solutions. We are working on um, bridging computer science with mechanical engineering expertise. Um, I have a PhD in mechanical engineering. I'm a graduate from Boston University. 
Later, I've been in Switzerland and uh, worked on supercomputers in, at ETH Zurich. I heavily work on uh, European Union projects. After completing my research at uh, Zurich, I came back and worked for G Aviation for five years. I worked as an engineer as well as a manager, and our projects were heavily based on Boeing and Airbus uh, aircraft engines. Um, in in uh, 2018, I decided with my co-founder Burian Turan to start a new venture called Simularch, and we committed to create a system in which we can have engineers, technical people, consultants, as well as data scientists to create their own tools over cloud infrastructures. So we know our task was difficult, but in Within two years, we collected insights from the manufacturers, from production engineers, as well as engineers that are working on R&D projects, and we developed TN API. Um, a similar, we are also recognized with our uh, software solutions. So far, within 200, more than 200 uh, startups, we are recognized as top five startup companies. And our solutions are heavily based on digital twins and manufacturing industries. We are proud to be the only company in Turkey and one of the few companies in Europe. Uh, and let's talk about Twin API. Why Twin? Why API? So I hope within this webinar you'll have some understanding about our approach. And if you didn't really sign up for Twin API, I recommend you to log in to. Uh, tvnapi.com and you can just register for free. It will help you throughout this uh, course if you would like to test uh, our platform by your own. So what is TVN API? In order to understand the reason we created TVN API, we need to understand the problems faced in the industry. So we are living in a dynamic environment. I mean, forgetting about the COVID, uh, problems that we faced uh, for the last year. In reality, industry has many challenges. And the main challenge in industry is creating products and making sure the products are uh, manufactured cheaper and cheaper every following year. So there's a huge, uh, huge potential to reduce the cost. But so far, everything done in industrial optimization processes focus on supply chain or Lean Six Sigma approaches. No one really focused on uh, understanding the real physical phenomena, the operations that really create the products like forming, drawing, joining, or separation processes. With, with Tivina API, we would like to come up with a new approach in which engineers and many other technical people can create their own tools. So it is also related to the challenges uh, that is related to Industry 4.0. Everyone is trying to come up with their own digital transformation solution, but to be honest, no one is really sure whether the approach they are taking is the best way. Some even hesitate to start with digital transformation. So we hope with Twin API, anyone, any company that has not really started their journey in digital transformation can start. Or if you are a company that is focused on Improve, improving your uh, products, you can still leverage TVN API. And at the end, since we are focused on reducing raw material consumption and energy consumption, we are also offering an eco-friendly environment. So from sustainability point of view, digital twins created in TVN API will help the global uh, problems as well. So when you start using TVN API, you'll be initiating your digital transformation efforts if you didn't, or you'll be accelerating your digital transformation. And we will be creating an ecosystem for engineers that would like to start with data science and engineering tools. Let's talk about uh, some of the features before we start with our demonstration live on tvnapi.com. So essentially, um, Twin API is written in Python. So it is an interface between you 
and the core solvers that might be written in C++, Fortran, some might be open source, some might be spatial uh, similar uh, algorithms and routines. But at the end of the day, you will be using directly Python. And since uh, we are focused on Python, we needed to make sure that we have a Python editor. Now, forgetting all of the stuff we created for you in the last year, you can still use Twin API as an editor for Python projects. We included the major Python um, distributions as well, including NumPy, SciPy, Scikit, and a special module created by us, which is called Twin API routines. So throughout this course, I'll be showing you how Twin API is helping your product development processes. We have also included a couple of open source um, CAE tools interfaces. And when I say CAE, I mean computer-aided engineering software. Normally, ANSYS, Abacus could be regarded as licensed enterprise software, but under TVN API, you have the opportunity to test open source solvers as well. So for that reason, we include Calculix and also soon OpenFOAM as an interface for you to use through TVN API. We also included our very first finite element solver called CoreFAM. It is capable of dealing with solid mechanics, nonlinear systems, as well as heat transfer. On top of these finite element solvers, we also included one the, one the uh, routines for spatial thermofluidics uh, applications, a material library unique for gases, solids, and liquids, an interface to combine all of the engineering efforts with machine learning and AI, as well as a tool to perform quick design of experiments, and also a couple of industry-related packages, for instance, heat exchangers. And last but not least, we are today releasing our very first app create replication in beta form, which will help you to create a tool rather than a code structure. And here you, you see, <clears throat> you will be with me creating a new app and start using it right away. It'll be maybe a quick and simple calculator, but it help you to remove the burdens that you are having with Excel or any other software. Yeah, I guess it's time to create a demo. So let me go to my other screen and let us work with me. And maybe now you can start testing your very own solvers. Okay, let me just share screen here. Okay. So I hope you can all view uh, Tvn API screen. So this is basically Tvn API. Normally when you first access Tvn API, you are asked to register yourself. Registration is for free, so you don't have to pay anything. And it will also be helpful for you to save your files, save your code, also run in longer durations. So I'm already registered, of course, so let me log in first. Okay, now when you're logged in, you'll be seeing three distinct sections. On the left, you're seeing the links that are related to your projects. So the green section is specifically for you. So here you will be creating your own files and working on your own projects. But since Twin API is a new platform, we, we decided that we need to share some examples as well as simple tutorials. So our examples are given in this section in blue color. You can just go ahead and test all of them by your own. By your own. You just have to click on run and that will be all. On top of the examples, we are also providing simple tutorials. I know the list is now very short, but within this uh, month, we will be planning to add more and more tutorials as well as examples. So in this tutorial, compared to any other problem, you are guided to this, to this file as well. So with some comments, as well as some guidance to understand 
the content of the examples. In the second part of this uh, TVN API routine, you will be seeing, maybe I can open a simple example here. Um, for instance, this one. You will see in the Python editor. And it is a special editor and you can see the critical keywords, the syntax is automated and adapted by Python language. So whenever you write a Python specific keyword or a function, it'll be highlighted. So it gives you the feeling of a common integrated development environment like Visual Studio Code or PyCharm. In this second section, you'll also be seeing a couple of buttons. These buttons will help you to save your project as well as upload documents or running the code itself. And finally, in the third section, the rightmost section, you'll be seeing a couple of tabs. So these tabs are for seeing the output of your code. If there are any errors, or maybe your code is not really perfect, you can see the error message and you can fix your code. Also, we created a section in which you can view your files. We are giving you the opportunity to upload your documents from this button. Currently, we are supporting text files and also a step through the image, but soon we'll be allowing more files and more sizes under TVN API. And we also have a little button here, which is uh, called Show Graph. TVN API has the opportunity to create graphics and plots as well. And within this lecture series, I'll be showing you a couple of examples too. Okay, so let me create with our first, very first project. So in order to start, you can either pick one of the examples, okay, or you can click on new project right here. Okay, let's say first project. And your project is right here. I have a couple of examples to show. So it is the last file in my section. Um, as I said, you'll be programming in Python. So I can say x equals one, y equals to two, say z equals x plus y, y print z. And you just click run. And you'll be seeing three as an output. So that was a simple example. Let's make it more complicated. Um, I can also define a function. If my function, it takes x and y as an input and also say return x plus, maybe x times y this time, okay? And I'll make sure, um, I'll make sure I'll be testing something else. Say t equals my func two and four. And hopefully when I say print t, I'll be seeing a result. So, oops, I have an error because I, need, I forgot that this double dots. So now I know my syntax is correct. Let me run this again. Okay, now I, I got two results. The first one is the initial addition we created and now a multiplication through a function and result is eight, which is 2.4. Okay, let's try something else, maybe something more complicated. For that reason, we can go back to our example cases and I'll be opening, um, for instance, this example here, which is um, a solid cube example, okay? This example has two uh, interesting features. We are introducing a TVN API module. And under Twin API module, now you have the options to set a measure for 3D uh, geometries as well as a solver. And in this example, we are activating the core fam solver right here. And then I click preview and you should notice the preview button is only active when we include special Twin API routines right here. So when I click preview, And let me wait. We are seeing a three dimensional image right here. Okay. 
Why? Because we created a unit box right here. We are using our special measure uh, utilities and these measure utilities have multiple functions. You can create cylinders, spheres, L shape, T shape, geometry that are heavily used in engineering. And then you can just automatically assign the geometry into your project. And now in these examples, I was able to run a simple unit cube a geometry. If I click run, now the simulation will be executed because preview is helping you with geometry. Now, when I click to run, you will be analyzing, you will be performing a simulation on this image. So it says, yeah, the simulation is completed. And now in order to see the simulation result, I'll be clicking the results button this time, okay? Results button will give me the option to visualize the values on this geometry. So you can see it is the very same geometry, which is the unit cube, but now I can also visualize the loads on this cube. So you can see automatically while writing, uh, uh, by writing a code, we can create a simple Python script, we can create a geometry, we can perform an analysis, and we can also visualize the results within the same browser. Let's try something else, maybe um, a simple equation calculation, and I'll be returning to fluid mechanics this time. And this example is called Reynolds number. And Reynolds number is a physical parameter that helps us to understand whether we are in a turbulent regime or a laminar regime. And turbulent generally means that the flow is really chaotic and it's really fast. When it's laminar, it's a steady, smooth flow. So in this example, we are introducing two new functionalities of TVN API. So at first, you are seeing a TVN API dot engineering parameters. So TVN API will give you the opportunity to access common engineering, uh, engineering numbers like Reynolds number, Kirchhoff number, Stanford number, heavily used in fluid mechanics. But in order to calculate the so-called Reynolds number, you should also have access to common material uh, properties. And now we are also introducing a TVN API material library. Now you have access to say water properties or even air properties. And in these examples, we imported water. And now it's just simple to get the features. I mean, for instance, at the seventh line right here, I am uh, returning or I am asking for the density of the water. And at 20 degrees of Celsius, I'm just converting it to Kelvin to make sure the calculations are correct. Or here at line 10, I am calculating the viscosity. And later I can also call multiple values here and you're already seeing, let me click on run. On the output section on the right hand side, you are seeing automatically we, are, uh, we have this value almost 1000 for density. 10 to the minus three is dynamic viscosity, conductivity is 0.6, and Reynolds number is estimated as almost one million. So it is a turbulent flow. And the part that Reynolds numbers come into the pitch comes into the feature is right this and lines 30 and 31. So you can see we are using the Reynolds function imported at the very first line, and we just we just forward the required required input values. So all of these examples are also included in our support section here. When you click on documentation, you will be seeing a bunch of examples. The documentation is not really uh, fully um, included. We are expanding the content every day. Okay, let's say I calculated Reynolds number, but how can I really incorporate this in a real project? Now maybe I can click the HTC. So the HTC is a special value that is commonly used in heat transfer problems. In this case, I'm almost running the same problem. When you click, I mean, when we compare the HTC with Reynolds number, they are almost identical. Except now we are introducing another TVN API routine, which is called the engineering functions. 
So the engineering functions are referring to common engineering formulas or some mathematical equations that are needed to perform simple engineering calculations. And in this case, we are focused on heat transfer. We have options for solid mechanics and fluid mechanics as well under physics. Now, under heat transfer, I'm also focused on HTC functions. So the HTC functions are generally used in aerospace as well as um, energy sector or also in automotive to got the feeling about the uh, temperature of the uh, volumes we are interested. And when I click this, uh, the run button right here, now the Rayness number we just created in a different example, or also here is an input for the HTC calculation, okay? Now, I, I believe you have some grasp about TVN API now. We are using different modules with each other to pursue a larger goal, a more complex goal, but we are building that step by step with simple building blocks. Okay, I got this HTC, now what? Can I use it in a more complex problem? Yes, you can. For instance, we have this new example, which is called the T-Beam ML. Soon it'll be an example in which we are using um, mechanical engineering with machine learning. Um, let me see what kind of a, a problem I'm dealing with. It's a T-shaped problem. See, I uh, already told you we can create different shapes using our geometric routines. And this T-shaped problem, I'm saying, hey, this base is really hot, but I can also use this top to cool this to cool this piece. So what kind of a HTC value should I set in order to calculate the temperature distribution within the geometry? You can just go ahead and analyze this. Uh, this code as well, but I can tell you after calculating the HTC value, we just combine our internal solvers with CAE solvers. So in this example, let me run this problem and we can see, we can have the feeling about this uh, example. I'll be calculating the temperatures directly on cloud with the given body conditions. Now, the results are given, and you can also see we have a huge output here, okay? Let me see how the temperature is really changed. Okay, now you see we have a base temperature, which is really up almost 500 degrees. And on top, we are trying to cool the piece down. Now, the HTC is assigned on the top surface, and the rest is just simple temperature calculation. And also, you're using this our interface, you can maybe limit the parts that you are really interested in. And the example, this region is almost between 310 and 350 degrees. But that's not all. In this example, we also created the so-called design of experiments example. I mean, let me show where we have this graph. Okay. Now, what's that? I mean, to be honest, we didn't solve just one problem. When you focus on this example here and this line 25, we tested under four different conditions. A very slow airflow or water flow in this example. And then we keep increasing the speed of the liquid and see what kind of a temperature we are getting in this TB. And for that reason, for that reason, we are seeing multiple results here. Okay, so in reality, this example was just four distinct simulations. And we can extract data from this design of experiments and see all of them in a one simple chart. For instance, in this example, I see when velocity is one, the temperature is about 310 degrees, and when it increases speed, it is almost identical. So can we do something else? I mean. What if I create a list of velocities that are close to one, okay? Let me run this example again and see how the temperature is really changed. You can see these computations are not uh, performed in your PC. They are all 
be automatically scaled in our cloud infrastructure. And now you see the temperature calculations are given and you see depending on the velocity value, we have reduced the temperature from 330 until uh, up to 310 degrees. Okay, what else? What kind of other examples we can provide? So we also introduced the simple 1D calculators. And in this example, we are solving for a pipe flow. And this pipe flow has some temperature on, on these walls and we can make sure the calculations within this pipe is performed in our new solver. And here as well, when we import solver routine right here, we can identify what kind of a function we are really looking for. And in this example, I'm setting one determinal flow option. That's not all. I'm also saying that my cross section is circular. We have also other, ex other examples in which we have focused on the concentric cylinder or maybe a pipe with a square cross section. In this example, on the other hand, we are just focused on a simple circular flow. You see, real quick, I mean, just two seconds and you did your calculation already. You see the temperatures here, and I'm within the length of this pipe, but you have also the option to see how the temperature is really changed along the pipe center line. Um, we did a design of experiments for a simple 3D T-beam. Can we also do the same uh, with this 1D thermal problem? Yes, we can. We also have an example here. In this case, it, is a, it has a, a square cross-section. And I would like to understand what kind of a temperature profile I might get when I change the flow rate, like, in, uh, like here in line 23. Again, simply, I just click on run. I wait a couple of minutes, no, a couple of seconds. And you can see right here, we see the results for four distinct cases. You can also get them separately. And in the future, we'll have the option to save the, file, save the results in file section. So you can go ahead and download the files one by one. Okay, so let's introduce something new. Just that is most of the time forgotten when we are creating a data science project. So everyone's dealing with uh, codes, codes, you are running codes, but what about user experience? Can we also create an interface in which all of the scripts are converted into applications? And for that reason, we created the so-called App Creator. So App Creator is giving you the opportunity to create simple cloud native applications. So when I look here, you can see uh, from lines three up to lines 12, it's a simple function. You just provide three inputs. And at the end, you got the summation of these three input values and you just return T. What if I save this as an app? in which I don't really care about the details of the code. I just want to use the app. So it's like there is this developer who is working with TVN API, dealing with the scripts and creating a solver. And there is the other person who is consumption, who is con consuming this app. Could be, an, could be an user, could be a technician as well. So I just click on save as an app. That's it. But don't forget to add the first line, which is the app manager and app creator. If you don't add it, I mean, let me comment. So the app, save as app won't work. But now I can create an app within this browser. So you can see I already created a bunch of applications. So when we click, you need to wait a couple of seconds to make sure the app is created for you with a special unique identifier. And um, let me wait a couple of minutes. It'll be created here anyway. And then you will be using the application directly without seeing the code there. And OK, it's finished already. 
took about 5, 15 to 20 seconds. Let me go to the app creator. Okay, app creator is its name. You can just change its name anyway. Okay, so in this example, X was one, Y was two, Z was three, but it doesn't matter for this app. It is dynamic. So you can just say X is two, Y is three, and Z is four. And this is a button and I got the result. I can also make Z 40. I still get the result, 45. So if you create a bunch of applications, you can just access them from your apps the repository. And that's it, that's it. I mean, maybe you are working with gas dynamics. Maybe you are, you are working on a simple fatigue calculation, high cycle fatigue, low cycle fatigue, and you run a bunch of simulations. And then what you, what you need to do is create a simple application for your script. In this example, let me go back. We made sure that this function really works, but then it's, it's just a new function. Let me test something else. I mean, if I can create a function with you guys, um, new app. I created a bunch of apps anyway. Okay, so let me go to a new app. What should we do? Well, let me multiply all of them, okay? And I'll be changing here, say, click here, here. Um, I expect six as a value if I give this input. If I change the input, the, the result will be different. Again, I'll be clicking here at beta, and I need to wait like 15 to 20 seconds. And we are working hard to even reduce this time, but I mean, it doesn't really prevent you to go back and continue with your scripts because this is done automatically in cloud. When it's completed, you can be you can be just go back and notified with the status of your application. Let me wait a couple of minutes here. Okay, new apps also generated. Okay, now it's a different application. You can see on the top, the identifier is different. And this is unique for your application. If you are, after sharing your application, the simple calculator with someone else, what should, what should you do? You just need to share this URL with your colleague, that's it. Um, let me perform this multiplication now. Click here, see, now we change the title of the label of this button and I get 24. Okay, so let me go back. And home. Okay, essentially we uh, previewed the main features of Tivin API. Now we have some graphs about Tivin API procedures. If you are new to Tivin API, you can just go ahead and go through the tutorials. If you are after looking, if you are after for other problems, you just go over the examples and you can test them one by one. For instance, in this example, we are opening a three-dimensional image, which was already uploaded by me into my file section. Okay, so when I could preview, it'll understand how, how the function is really drawn and you can see we are seeing nine cubes. You can just go ahead and upload your own step file. And this example will help you to visualize your geometry. Okay, so you did your work here and you have some questions. What is What are your options? So your first option is to visit documentation. So it's tvnapi.com slash docs. You can just automatically access it from your support link on the right-hand side right top corner. And we added uh, the initial phase of documentation here. Let's say you have a different problem and you would like to see the answer. Okay, then you have also the option to access our forum pages. It is registration required, but registration is free. And you can see there are a bunch of questions already in our forum page. You can just go ahead and ask. Our team will help you to identify your problem 
if, if it's a bug, we can resolve it. If it, is a, if it is a feature request, we can put it in our backlog and introduce it as soon as possible. Um, you can also maybe follow TV and API Twitter page. And also we have a status page. If there is a problem uh, of TV and API, you can just hear and you see we are always operational, uh, even if we are using different cloud infrastructure providers. Okay, so I guess that is all from my side. Um, let me stop sharing. It is time to get a couple of questions. Um, I guess we are already 20 minutes. Uh, let me first complete the presentation and then I can take some examples here, maybe questions. Okay, <laughs> and that is the final page, thank you. So if you have questions about the uh, general idea behind TV and API, you, guys, you can just send me an email from the email address I just shared with you. If you have future ideas or you found a couple of bugs or you would like to have something else uh, under TV and API, you can just send an email to TV and API at similars.com. As, as I said already, forum is always available for you. You can just register, log in and type your question. At the end of the day, just go to tvnapi.com and start coding. Okay, so let me see whether we have questions here. Okay, so what is HTC? <laughs> Thank you, Julia. So HTC is a transfer coefficient. It is uh, it, it is related to cooling power or heating power of a liquid or a gas. So when you open your air conditioning, you can set it the small, I mean, uh, a slow fan speed, higher fan speeds. When you increase the speed of the fan, you feel either warm or cooler. And this value that you that, that is given to you as a feeling of this warmth or coolness is related to heat transfer coefficient. So it is a common value used in thermodynamic uh, application, energy application, as well as heat and ventilation problems. Um, do you do you have a list of library modules? I mean, which module is required to include turbulence model to our simulation, for example? Okay, so a good question. So we have a list uh, under twinlp.com slash docs. We'll keep expanding this list uh, probably until the end of April. So for the turbulence problem, it is related to a three-dimensional simulation. So the three-dimensional fluid simulations will be tied to open form implementation uh, in our Twin API platform. And our aim is to complete the integration at the end of second quarter, early third quarter then you'll have the option to run open form examples or maybe fluid mechanics problems as well. And turbulence will be an option, of course, not just as turbulence. You'll have the option to test different modules as well as, I mean, runs, K-Epsilon or SSD model, models. And if you are after uh, calculating a, a Y plus uh, measure, you can also visit our simulstore.com webpage. We already created a simpler a calculator that might help you to create a turbulence uh, turbulence related mesh sizes. Okay, what else? How complicated geometries are allowed to import? How do we know the whole number if we want to apply boundary conditions on boundaries? So that's a good question. Um, in reality, uh, before we introduce TV and API, we introduce also our three-dimensional solver, which is called Express, express.simulars.com. Um, soon, you'll have the option to import your file and play on the boundaries within the same interface. I know some of the step files are uh, options to take surface names, but it's not generally applicable for all files assuming you have an STL file, which is a triangulation of a 3D image, it will be real difficult to identify the surface names. So 
will give you the option to select the surface and assign a name. Once the name is given, then you'll, you'll have the option to set a boundary condition. If you are saying top boundary, top is the top surface of the uh, your three-dimensional image, then you'll be saying use top and apply temperature, pressure, displacement. So this is doable and it is in beta right now and we hope to uh, introduce uh, this feature probably also between quarter two. Thanks for the question, Amit. How I should ask how you import models. If you don't, how do you define the models to make understandable by Python? Okay, so uh, I'm not sure what, what you're referring to as a model. I'm assuming the 3D image, a 3D uh, shapes. So we already have an example, import cat geometry example under Twin API. You can just review the code and understand how system works. But essentially, you have to upload a 3D dimensional image and just import it with our Twin API importing functions. If you are asking for, I don't know, Python modules or Python models, you can just import them directly by copying and pasting and we'll be introducing an importing wizard, not just for Python, maybe for other files as well as CSV files or um, Excel files as well. You can, for now, you can just copy and paste your Python file, it will be functional. If you require, a special Python module that we didn't know, but essential for your project, then tell us. So we can just go ahead and uh, review the um, package. If it is a really common package, we can just include it in, into our repository, and then you'll have the option to run it directly under Tune API. I hope this is the answer you are looking for. If not, I should just go ahead and ask again a bit follow-up questions. So Matt asked, what is the main difference between Twin API and Sim scale? And when I re research digital twin solution, topic mainly focus on increasing manufacturing capabilities. So do you have any plan to expand your application? Oh, very good question. So Sim scale is essentially a platform to perform 3D simulations only. So when I say 3D simulations, the common uh, examples are solid mechanics, heat transfer, fluid mechanics, maybe combination of those two by the structure interaction and anything else. Unlike SimScale, a TVN API will differentiate in a couple of sections. First, you can create your own application. So if you follow the rules, you can create your own SimScale example because what we are using in our backend are also similar to the packages utilized by SimScale. So for instance, they are using Calculix to fire from solid mechanics calculations so we are. We also include our simulate-based solver core, core fan. SimScale is utilizing open form for three-dimensional fluid mechanics calculations. So we will. I mean, from that point of view, uh, from a 3D simulations uh, aspect, we are identical. On top, we have the option to create app apps for your case. In terms of digital type application, you are right. Manufacturing is heavily uh, improved by digital twins, and this is our also starting point. We created our twin API function so that the manufacturing operations are uh, simulated uh, easily. For instance, we included a heat exchanger module. I mean, I can also maybe thanks for this uh, reminder. Maybe I can go back and uh, show it to you. The simple. Heat exchanger example, let me go back. Okay. For instance here, we, we are performing a calculation for fouling. Fouling is related or heat exchanger uh, dirtiness. So when you work with liquid materials and since they are in warm or maybe hot environment, within time, liquid is turned into solid pieces into dirt, and that is called to falling. When falling is increased, heat exchanger capacity is reduced. So you are not really ch exchanging heat between two different uh, uh, liquids. So in these examples, for instance, when we run it, we run a heat exchanger calculation as well as a machine learning algorithm to estimate the falling. 
Now you can see right here, if the output temperature is increased, falling is also increased. So you can see there's a trend from left to right in which the falling is really increased. So this is how we envisioned to combine manufacturing with simulation. We'll be offering uh, manufacturing operation specific functionalities. For instance, here, heat exchanger, or maybe I can show one from my examples. Um, Neo, okay, perfect. Here, for instance, we are focused on plastic simulation. Uh, polymers are heavily used in uh, FMCG appliances, automotive industry. They are really hard to simulate and you need to make sure the material properties are known in advance. In this example, I have a test data and this test data is similar to lab tests performed in factories. So I just run this example and it will give you the material properties itself. Now you can see this value on the right hand side, 0.65 can be put into a simulation. You see, our aim is to offer many modules, many functionalities that are directly related to manufacturing. So joining, combining, deep drawing, forming, everything will be included in TVN API. So if you have, let's say a terraforming example or plastic injection uh, problem, you will have the option to include that functionality within TVN API. So let me stop here. So Matt, I hope I answered your question. So let me, yeah, so we are expanding um, day by day by including new functionalities. We already, by the way, we already have uh, digital TVN solutions used by a couple of enterprises, uh, in especially in Turkey. But generalization of these software packages or software solutions are digital twins into TVN API it will take some time, but we already started. And as I said, un until quarter two, probably most of the software uh, repository we created will be a part of digital uh, TVN API. Okay, so my question. I'm interested on your studies. I want to ask for future work. What is your next step about it? Okay. So, good question. So, our aim is to create an ecosystem for engineers. Outcome, as I said uh, within the webinar, this Twin API um, platform is useful for developing solutions, but there is also the user side. I mean, there are so many people. Um, in the industry, they are keen to use some tools, but they don't really capable of creating these tools. So understanding Python, running cloud simulations might be difficult for them, but there is a potential in maybe in glass industry. Maybe when you create a rubber, maybe a tire, there should be a potential for your application. So you'll have the option to create your app and sell it through TVN API marketplace. Um, our plan is to expand the capabilities of TVN API and give every one of you the option to create your own applications and sell them within um, the TVN API platform. In a sense, it will be similar to Apple's App Store or maybe Google uh, Android uh, Play, but this one will be specific for industrial applications, R&D applications, anything related to high-tech high -tech applications. Also, since you are dealing with Python, you can also work on finance problems, a simple loan calculator, right? Interest rate calculators, maybe net present value for future investments. They can also be created under TVN API because TVN API is a tool for creating calculators, simple or complex tools for simulations. So now the focus will be uh, creating developers, TVN API user, users, and the future, we would like to create a TVN API ecosystem for creation or um, selling of digital twins, maybe simple or complex simulations. If you are working on a thesis, for instance, now you have the option to turn your thesis into, an, uh, into a sellable 
marketable software. Oh, okay. I uh, guess that's all. All of the questions that I um, received so far. Okay, I got a comment from Burian. Thanks, Burian. So machine learning capabilities as a sensor connectivity. Thanks. Okay, so TVN API directly supports um, some of the major uh, modules in machine learning, for instance, Scikit. And we created a module called Simulearn. Simulearn will give you the access to data science, but with, with few command lines. When you work with Scikit, for instance, you have to maybe write at least 20 to 50 rows of code lines just to make sure you have a working machine, machine learning algorithm. Now, thanks to Simulearn, and you can also test it from our simple share and following example, you can just apply Simulearn and in a couple of code lines, you just create your own machine learning solution. So that means you can combine 3D simulation directly with machine learning. That is normally difficult, for instance, when you use ANSYS, right? In ANSYS, you have to set your own boundary conditions, but you just know the material type, air. In, in TVN API, you can set air, set a specific HTC value, run your problem, extract data from your 3D dimension simulation, and use it in training your machine learning algorithm. That means after a couple of design of experiment studies, running multiple cases, you can train, train your solver such that you don't have to rerun your simulation again. It is not possible. I mean, as I said, I mean, maybe I can show it again here. Um, let's see. Okay, so this T-beam ML example, for instance, you're running multiple simulation at the same time, and you got result of the center right here. Okay, so you just type the location and you got the result. Or in shell and tube falling, we include a similar as our machine learning algorithm. And you just include your data set, either a CSV file or random data generated by our, by our, by our Twin API tools. And you just state a couple of values, that's it. It is machine learned right now. And other than that, uh, we are also emphasize the connectivity. So, so far, everything we created are running in cloud, but data is given manually, either by your own design space or some of the files imported or uploaded uh, in Twin API. We will be introducing connectivity. That means if you are a sensor data releasing or uh, broadcasting data, maybe a bunch of values, thermocouple values, vibratory values from accelerometers, pressure value, right, or proximity, uh, distance uh, measurements. If you know the address of your sensor data, then you can directly call it from TVN API. We already have our solutions with real life streaming data. Now in TVN API, you will be using our internal IoT functionality and you just have to write the address, that's it. When the address is given in real time, you will be keep, you'll be keep training your data set. That means you can combine a hypothetical physical problem <clears throat> with real physical data and it will really help you to create the best solution. And now we are talking about digital twins. Okay, um, I guess that's all. It's almost one hour now. So thank you for attending. Uh, after this meeting, I'll be sharing your certificates as well because you are the very first visitors <laughs> or attendees, our first panel on TVN API. <clears throat> Thanks. Uh, stay safe and keep using TVN API. Bye now.